Gentleman from New York, Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, and, and thank you, Chairman, for coming in uh, uh, to speak with us today. Uh, Chair Powell, in the summer of 2019, which admittedly was a different world, <laughs> um, during a, a financial services committee hearing, uh, you relayed to me that, quote, I would look at today's unemployment as well within the range of plausible estimates of what the natural rate of unemployment is. Do you recall what the unemployment rate was around that time in 2019? I want to say three and a half percent. Yes, it was 3.5 percent. And what is the uh, current unemployment rate today? 3.6 percent. 3.6. You also said, quote, when unemployment went way up, you didn't see inflation go way down. So you don't see inflation reacting to unemployment the way it does because inflation seems very anchored. Again, that was at that time. Uh, Chair Powell, would you say that some, you know, uh, briefly, yes or no, but would you say that some of the contributing factors to today's inflation include ongoing supply chain issues, including volatility of uh, commodity prices as a result of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, and companies also raising prices because they can? Well, I, I, I would say on supply side issues, for sure, those are playing an important role. And am I correct that American workers' wage, wage gains have actually trailed inflation? Um, in other words, while the cost of goods went up by 8.6% on average, wages did not increase by that much. It depends. Uh, for some uh, people to lower end of the spectrum ha actually have been getting positive real wage gains. For most of most people, though, inflation has been higher than their wage increases. So on average, we have a wage growth at about 6.1%. So average wages are trailing inflation. Um, <clears throat> it does seem that American workers are not primarily responsible for the inflationary issues that we're seeing today. Um, but despite this, we are seeing some comments from individuals like former U.S. Treasury Secretary uh, Lawrence Summers earlier this year said that in order to contain inflation, the U.S. needs uh, five years of unemployment above 5 percent or one year of 10 percent uh, unemployment. Do you agree with that assessment? So I, I understand how that number can be uh, arrived at or derived, but um, I, I think there's so much uncertainty, and in particular, the, the, um, that the answer is going to depend to a significant extent on what happens on the supply side. If we if we do get these supply side problems uh, worked out, which I think is certainly going to happen in time, then then uh, then th then you wouldn't see anything like that. But I, it's a highly uncertain time, and. Um, our, our intention, of course, is to, is to bring down inflation while keeping the labor market strong. I, I think it's important to, to drive home what a 10 percent sustained unemploy, unemployment would look like uh, in this country. For context, we didn't even reach 10 percent during the Great Recession. Uh, we did experience 10 percent unemployment in 1982 following the Volcker shock. Um, but in this market, to get to 10 percent unemployment, that would require about 10.5 million additional people out of work. And historically, we know that black unemployment is usually double that of white unemployment, correct? Yes, it tends to move at twice the speed, both up and down, but certainly moving up. So when the former Treasury Secretary says he wants 10% unemployment overall, um, he's also saying that we need black unemployment of nearly 20%, or implies that. Um, but Chair Powell, I do think that Despite the tools that you may or, that you don't have, Congress does have tools as well. Um, would you say that the following actions, granted in the scope of Congress, could be deployed to impact inflation um, using antitrust laws against companies that are raising uh, prices using their market power? I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't hear the last part. Would this action, uh, would using antitrust laws against companies that are raising their prices, uh, have an, infl an sorry, impact on inflation? Laws? Antitrust? Antitrust laws. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. The, the Would, acoustics in here are different. No worries. Would that have an inflationary impact? Um, it's hard to say, really. Would uh, subjecting those companies to a windfall profits tax have a potential impact on inflation? Again, I don't. I'm, I, I, and would requiring say. government contractors to keep a lid on their pricing have imp uh, certain impacts on inflation? You know, there's a long history of price controls when inflation has been high, and it was n it was not a successful one. Really, really, it comes down to getting demand and supply in alignment. And uh, if the Ted, if the Fed's tools mostly impact demand, 
Um, but most of those inflationary issues could be potentially impacted by supply. How high do you think the Fed would actually have to drive unemployment to actually have an impact? Well, that's, that's going to depend on a lot of things. And, um, you know, ideally, we, uh, we can raise rates, and uh, it's very important um, that we get inflation back down, particularly for people in the margins of society who are suffering the most from inflation. And um, maybe a longer conversation with that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much.